Right, my name is Dave Cannon, and I have a wood shop in Hawkinsville, Georgia, named Cannon Woodworks, and we produce primarily kitchen cabinets. Uh, sometimes we do furniture, and we pretty much are an all-purpose wood shop. We repair furniture, we refinish furniture, but primarily, our primary business is kitchen cabinets. One of the primary functions of a cabinet builder is to build the doors. And the doors that we're going to, the door that we're going to make today is a, a glass door, contains a glass window pane, and it will contain also mullions to make it look like they're individual panes in the door. We'll make the four parts of the, of the uh, door, and then we'll make individual mullion dividers that uh, when you look at the door, it looks like it has individual window panes. The first thing you do when you manufacture a door is you determine the size of the door. And there's a formula that you use that you calculate the rails and the styles. The rails uh, are the parts that go across the top like a guardrail and across the bottom. And the styles are the two pieces that go down the side. And uh, depending on the router bits you're using, it usually supplies you with a formula and you get the lengths of the pieces that you need. I've already pre-done that and I'm going to, what I'm going to do now is cut the four parts that I need for the door. Tape measure, I go ahead and measure. I got, always have a real sharp pencil and I need two pieces, two and a quarter inches by 19 and 3 quarters. So I marked the 19 and 3 quarters. Adjust it on my saw. Get the other dimension, which is 12 and 7 eighths inches. Cut 12 and 7 eighths. I need to take these and rip these to two and a quarter inches wide. There'll be two of these and two of these. Uh, these are the these are the pieces that we just got through cutting on the miter saw. They're the correct length, but they're not the correct width. So we come to the table saw, and I set my fence at two and one quarter inches, and then I carefully push it through the saw. They're my two styles that go up and down on the door. Well, the other piece I cut is for the rails, the pieces that go across. We cut those. Now I've got my two pieces that go up and down, called the uh, styles, and then I've got my two pieces cut for the rails. And that's pretty much the pieces I need other than the mullions, and we'll do those in, in later on. Okay, these are the two pieces that I cut for the rails, the top and the bottom. We've got a router bit here that cuts the matching grooves in the ends of the doors. I place it in this clamp so that it holds it and I can push it through easily. Turn the router on. Okay, 
that's the process of cutting the ends that will join in to the uh, to the styles. So that's the first process in cutting your uh, your rails. Okay, the next process is to take the the uh, rails that we just cut the uh, you, that we just routed, and we're going to run them through and run the side routing. Okay, now we've, we've run the, uh, the rails and we ran the styles through here and we, they interlock together. And you get, you get a good, strong seal when you glue them together. So that's how you do the rails and that's how you do the styles by running them through the two processes. You route the ends of the rails and you route the sides of the rails and then you route the sides of the styles and they interlock together to make the door. Okay, now that we've done the rails and the styles, we're gonna do the mullions. And I've done the same thing, calculated out the length of the mullions, so I'm going to cut, uh, you have a mullion that goes up and down and you have two mullions that go across and I'll give you four panes in this particular door we're making. So I'm going to cut those pieces, 16 and 1 8. For the short pieces, I need six and three eighths. fit just like your rails do so you have to do the ends of the mullions so that they'll fit inside the, the styles and the rails. So there I've cut just like I did on the on the rails for the door. And then I come to this router and I run it run one edge through it. just like just like I did on the on the rails
Okay, now I'm gonna take these pieces I cut to make the mullions out and I'm gonna cut off seven eighths of an inch. And this time I'm gonna have to use a push stick because my fingers get so close to the saw I wanna make sure I don't cut my finger off. one half of the mullion. Now we've got to go back over to the router and do the other half so it matches on both sides. Now because these pieces are so small, you can't push them through the router because of the danger of cutting your hand. So what I do is make, I make myself a board that has the groove in it and I can interlock this to the board and push it through the router safely. So what I'm going to do right now is make me a push board. So I've made myself a push board now, and what I can do, I can put this piece on this board, and it will hold it for me, so I don't have to get my finger so close to the router. And run this through the router. So there you have the makings of a mullion. <laughs> See how small it is? Okay, now we have the parts we need to make the mullions for our door. Okay, now we're set up where we're going to assemble the door. And we've got our two styles that go up and down. We've got our two rails that go across. What we do, we take our clamp, clamping system. And we take one of the styles, line it up with the clamps, and then we take our rails and we apply glue and basically we use aliphatic glue. It's uh, yellow wood glue. Very common in hardware store. You can get uh, different brands, Type Bond and, and uh, various other brands, but it's just an aliphatic wood glue. It's yellow. It's not the white glue, like Elmer's white glue. All right, then you put, put that on there. Take the other end, the other rail. Glue it. Slide it in the grooves. Line it up so it's straight. All right, then I take the other style and I glue the other ends of the rails. Put this on here. I'll lay it down. I'll line up my clamps at the end so it's pushing right where the rail is. Line them up good. So 
So there are your rails glued in place and your styles glued in place with the interlocking joints. Then I take a tape measure, which I don't have one with me right now, <laughs> and measure from corner to corner to make sure the door is square. And for a glass door, you leave this open, of course, where you can put the glass in there. Now we go to these uh, mullions, and they're just like the rails. If you wanted to, you could put them in like that. But we're going to have a piece of glass in the back, so what I'm going to do is break this back part off. So that I can locate it and put it in place. Okay? All right, we have taken the mullions that we cut and I've broken off the bottom part, and that's where the glass will set up a against that when you put it in the back. And I'm going to glue these with my yellow glue. And I've measured where the center is, so we get these in the center. And I'm going to use this as a spacer so that I'm, I'm sure I got it in the right place. Okay. And I've got what's called a pin nailer. It puts in just a real tiny pin that holds that in place. And I just shoot that right in the side, or in the end, right like that. Then I'm gonna come down here and get my spacer right there. I'm gonna shoot a pin nail right in there. Now for these dividers here, I'm going to measure and I'm going to find the center. same thing. I'm going to glue the, glue the parts where they connect to this part. Take my little pin nail. Nail those. I'm going to break this back off of here. Just tap it with a hammer. Breaks right off. Now that we've assembled the door, there's always little cracks and little grooves that you want to fill so that, that it uh, makes the door appear good and, and perfect fit and so forth. And I use a wood filler that I get at Ace Hardware. It's a, it's a water-based filler and it's a natural color. The reason I use that is because it's easy to apply, it sands very well, it stays in place and it takes good stain if you're staining a job. And it comes in a little tub like this. And we use a little uh, putty knife. And what I'm going to do is these little cracks I've got right here where these mullions are, I'm going to fill those and the little holes from the pin nailer. I right like that. And then I fill the ends where the joint is with the same filler. And 
and then I let that dry. All right, once the door dries, then we get an orbital sander. We sand the front and the back smooth. We sand the edges and uh, you end up with a nice smooth door like this one is. But, I mean, you, can, you can't even feel the cracks. And the ends are full, you don't have cracks in the ends. And that's basically what the door looks like when you're finished. Flip it over, slide the glass in, and you've got a mullion door with glasses. And it looks like it's individual window panes, even though it's not, it's a single piece of glass. If you need to replace the glass, if it gets broken, it makes it real easy. You just cut it out, pull it out, and put another piece in. All right, after that, then you, you would, you would uh, apply your stain or your finish that the customer wants. You'd apply a lacquer. If it's stained, you'd apply a clear lacquer. If they want a pigmented color, like white or, or gray or whatever color they might want, you go go to a local paint supplier and they'll uh, mix the color for you just like you would if you were painting a wall in the house. And we spray it and put it on. We believe in making our own doors because I believe in top quality. And uh, I want to make sure that my doors are good and straight and square. Make sure they fit good. And we feel like we can just service the customer better if he has a problem with the door. It's no problem for him to bring it to, back to us, or we can go to his location and repair the door for him if something's wrong with it. And that's pretty much what we do as far as making the doors. And the mullion doors, I thought that was more interesting because it's a lot more detailed than just a regular door.